Welcome to another episode of Save My Assets. Yeah. And we got a special treat for you. We want to give away something very valuable to you that we know uh, you can use or you know someone who else can use it. Exactly. And also the reason why we do this is to keep your furniture in your hands and out of landfill by answering your questions that you leave in the comments below. Right. So it's very important that we keep as much stuff out of the landfill. Uh, it's really getting crowded. Yeah. In America alone, it's 9 to 10 million tons a year of upholstered furniture thrown in landfills. Quite a bit. That's a lot. It that is, is a lot. Unnecessarily. Unnecessarily. That's a great for word for part. putting it. For the most yeah, part. Some of it does need to go in the trash. Mm -hmm. Others, it really could last a lot longer. So we're here to help you make it last longer inside your household. Um, Absolutely. So let's get started with the first question, which is from Kathy. And it says, help, is the 26 foam the same as 2.6? Okay. And the answer is yes, it is. Right. And when she's, point? yeah, please. When she is talking about 26, she's referring to the density of foam. Mm -hmm. And whenever you hear density, get the idea of firmness out of your mind mm -hmm. and think of quality. Very good. Well yeah. said. Yes, very good. So the higher the number, the better the quality. The standard for quality is 18. Yeah, or even as low as 1.5. 1 1.5. 1 yeah. So when we say 18 is the same as 1.8, 1.5 is the same as 15, you guys get the gist. Right. So 2.6 or 26 is a higher quality foam. They even go a little higher than that. Actually. They do. Yeah. But um, 26 is really good. Yeah, it lasts for quite a long time. We have a 10-year warranty on foam like this right mm -hmm. here, which is a 2.6 or 26 density. Yeah. So, yes, it is that. So that's the first number whenever you're looking at foam, okay? It right. should be, okay? Then uh, Now, the next number is the compression, which is number 35. So what's the compression? Then? Compression refers to the firmness of the foam, how firm is your foam when you're sitting down on it. Now, she had a question is, is the 35 compression the same as ILD? Now, if somebody's like, whoa, what's ILD? I'd be like, whoa, what's ILD? Wasn't well, there an IFD too? Right? There's an IFD as well. Now, ILD stands for indentation load force deflection. I had to write it down because it's so confusing. I mean, think about it. Everybody should know that. Everybody, I mean, you know? it's ILD, guys. Yeah, yeah think well, about it when you're driving it. home from work. <laughs> you know, what's what's my ILD? So <laughs> I know it's so strange. Now IFD is indentation force deflection. So skip the load and just replace it with force. Right. It's the same thing. It's all going the same place. It's all going the same place. How far down your cushion will go when you sit on it. Right. That's it. It's the firmness of the foam. So standard across the industry, and Grant and I are included, we just say compression. Right. Because that's really what matters, you know? You could just skip and straight, you know, how comfortable is this thing? Right. Or you know, how is firm. Is it firm? Is it soft? Is it, you know, medium soft? Right. So it's so. a, it, they, they overcomplicate it for some reason, but... It's the industry speak. It's the industry speak. You know, Compression consumer speak. is really simple. It's firmness. That's it. Mm -hmm. Now, just to give you guys a roundabout idea, right here, this, I think, is what, a five inch? It looks like a five. Okay, so it's a five inch foam. Now, if you have a four inch and higher, 26 compression mm -hmm. is soft, right? 35 is medium soft, 45 is firm. Yeah, it's firm. And then the other one, 75, that's a brick. So don't yeah. even don't even go with that one. So we don't, even, we don't even have that on our site. We do have it on our site, but we only use it for very thin foam. We're thinking about taking it off. We are. Because we don't want someone to buy a 75. By accident. By accident. I don't even want to give a thickness because I think all of us, unless you're a gymnast, right. bouncing around your living room, it's probably not going to be of any good to you. Right. So not to get things confusing, again, density is quality. So it's 2.6, the same as 26. Compression is firmness. And it's the same thing as ILD and IFD. FD, right. Okay? But so... Hopefully that answered your question, Kathy. She has another one. You do, and we appreciate it. Seriously, yeah. Kathy. It's a good question. Good it very question. is. It really That's is. actually a client that we got to give to. Mm -hmm. So there you go. She hasn't sat down since we took it. No, <laughs> she's waiting. <laughs> she's really angry. Question is, how do I measure if all I have is an empty covers? In other yeah. words, my cushions, oh, go to sleep on me. My cushions that are so compressed, or I'm putting words in her mouth, damaged and destroyed, that the measurements would not be accurate. Just measure between the welts and then add a plus, add one inch. Right. And the answer is yes, you would do that. So we got a little sample over here just to make it a little easy. We thought this would be best to show it to you guys visually. A tape measure? Yeah. So first things first, if you don't mind jumping in no, here. No, please go ahead. 
I didn't even get up. If it's a little distorted, so for example, this is pulled and you're trying to measure it, obviously, first of all, you're not measuring straight across right. either. Because once when you pull this out, you're actually measuring up here. And that could add a half inch to an inch to it. So what you want to do is you want to make sure your cover is nice and flat, mm -hmm. right? And some covers do stretch a good amount when you pull it. This yes. one doesn't, for example. But if you have it nice and flat, you can measure in multiple areas, which is important. For example, right here, 22. Front to back is, let's see. See how it's wrinkled right here? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Move that back just a little bit. Front to back is 25. Mm -hmm. So you'd measure in multiple areas to make sure that it doesn't taper from the front to the back if the measurements are all the same. Right, now um, if it's tapering in front to the back, and you, know, you can see that in the platform. Yes. You know, you can see in the actual platform, you can see it tapering. Right. You know, like you just said, so. So you can look out for that. Basically, what you wanna do is lay it out flat, make sure you add that additional inch, and then go ahead and order it to that. If your cushion cover is damaged though. All right, if it's in a really bad shape, because we've seen it all, okay? Maybe there's like shredded all right here, and I get it, I mm -hmm. understand, you know, it's all old and everything. And now it's distorting, it's pulling out like say an inch here and then coming back in. I would measure, try to get around that tear from here to here, this is all you have to, to work with, from here to the back, front to the back, and then front to the back, okay you're getting a, pretty much the same measurement. In the middle, you're, you're getting an inch and a half more. You're getting an inch more. Right. Obviously, you know this, don't use that, okay? What you can do then is say, well, what am I gonna do? Go to your, can I tape measure there, yeah. please? Go to the, go to the uh, platform, that's where the cushion sits in your piece of furniture, your chair, love seat, what have you. Right. And have this just touch the back about four inches or so off the platform, because that's where your phone's gonna sit. Just imagine my phone, uh, my phone mm -hmm. is the back of the chair. Right, just touch it gently like that, and then look down at the edge of the platform where, it, where it's stopping, and I'm getting 25. Come over here and measure this, and you say, ah, yeah, it's 25. So now you're starting to get an idea of what your cover really is, okay? Sometimes the actual cushion hangs over the platform just a little bit. So In the front. Let's just say again, the platform was 25. Your cushion cover might be 26 just to give that extra inch over the platform so your legs aren't hitting near the platform. That's right. Some of them are flush right on. Some of them hang over just a little bit. Pretty rare that it's- Recess. It's recess. That's a bad job. That's okay? a bad job. Yeah. But you could, you could do flush or hang over. Obviously flip over and see if the other side's a little better shape. Mm -hmm. Cause you just gotta kinda work with it. That's yeah. all you gotta, I mean, that's all you have, right? And just to throw in one more thing, this is a bonus, she did not ask this. So Kathy, you're done, hopefully we helped you. I hope so. But let's just say you wanna make a new cover. Then you would also do another thing where you trace the actual platform. We'll show this in a later video. Mm -hmm. Trace it to make a new cover, then measure your new cover to fill it with the foam. Mm -hmm. Some people ask, like, should I do the foam first, then get the cover? You always want to get the cover first, then fill it with foam, because that's obviously what the, the foam is going to be pushing against is the cover. So mm -hmm. the best fill it, you make sure you have your cover straight first. Very good point. Yeah, cover first, then yeah. the filler. So right. then you would get these measurements. Yeah. Okay, and you say it's 25 up front, and then it's just, I don't know what it is, 23 and a half left and right and such. Yeah add an inch to all that, because you want to fill out your cover. And the same thing for the thickness here. If it's four inches, then order five inch with a full wrap. Mm -hmm. uh, the, a wrap is a Dacron, yep. okay? Or batting, whatever you want to call it. Um, and then just go from there and you should be perfectly fine. Pick the compression that you find to be most likely you're gonna to wanna to live with. Yeah, and if you do need to find a place to order foam, always check out our website, UC Private Courses. Com. Again, that's ucprivatecourses.com. We help out people. I'm on the phone with them all the time, helping them order it. So just so you guys get the right product. Mm -hmm. So go ahead and check that out if you want to. Yeah, I do have one more thing to say. We're trying to fill you with as much information as possible because yeah. you're going to be living with this cushion or this sofa for hopefully many more years. Yeah. If your platform is really springy, okay, kind of weak, and this is what a platform is, okay, mm -hmm. it could be. This is obviously firm. It's a table, right? So let's just say if it's really springy, then you're gonna to wanna to get a firmer foam. So if right. you have a firmer, something to compensate it. Compensate all that, you know, give. It's like you're sitting down in a hole. I mean, you know, let's get real. You need a little support. So I would go with a firmer foam with that. Uh, pretty much even no matter what thickness the foam is, 
five, six, seven inch. I still go with, if you're really like bouncing all over the place and you're sick of it, yeah. well then you need that support. The foam will help compensate it. Each platform for each furniture is different. You'll feel it inside your Just living room. You push down on it. You push down on it, your chair might be extremely soft, and then you go over to your sofa and you're like, wow, this thing is solid as a rock. Right. It's not really about build quality as much as it is how they, what materials they use for those. Yeah. I need to sneeze. Ugh. Go right ahead. And if you'd have like a sleep sofa, that's gonna be a firm platform, then I would go for me, you do what you need to do. I would do more of a softer one because the platform's not giving much. Right. A little touch and go there is exactly. all it is, okay? So we hope that helps out. Excellent. All right. So we're about to build up to give away that prize, so keep on watching to the end, but we're going to do one more question, and who's this? This is for Debbie. So let me see where Debbie is. Debbie is... There's Debbie. Right? Oh, I don't see her. There she is. Okay. okay, cool. How thick should the batting be for outdoor cushions? This is a great question. Now, again, we said this is for our client in Potomac. Obviously, this is not outdoor foam. This no. is outdoor foam right here. Right. And we'll go over the difference real quick what this is compared to this. The right. indoor, outdoor, what's the difference? Mm -hmm. um, so, you want to go do it that with now? Sure. Well, uh -huh. I'll get straight to the question right now. <laughs> yeah. This is a one inch uh, batting Daycron. Okay? Yes. And uh, there's one drawback. If you put on uh, batting onto a um, outdoor piece of cushion, uh, then you usually use glue or outdoor piece of foam, I should say. You usually use glue to make it stick. This is what's called an open cell, very open cell. This is yes. a dense closed cell. Okay. Yes. Meaning the little teeny cells in there are very tight together. This is very loose. And the purpose is so it can have water drain through. So if you, one, spray glue on top, you are resisting the ability for foam to go, uh, water to go through the foam. Basically, the glue is uh, filling up the cells. Yeah, so. right. But trust me, and you know this, water finds a way out, period. So yeah. there's a lot of openings here. Uh, it, people use batting or Daycron outside for um, outdoor foam. And it won't have any problems. Yeah. Okay. But this is the difference. We got a glass of water here and I got something on the floor to catch this. This is the difference between just don't get my cell phone. So watch this water just run straight on through. Sounds relaxing, doesn't it? Ah. Yeah. So you see the difference. Now we did that with this piece of foam. It would not run through. It would absorb it like a sponge. And that lady would have a wet spot on her cushion for months to come because yep. it's going to take so long for the dry out when we deliver this. And we would blame it on the dog. That's right. Uh oh. <laughs> like you didn't train it very well. That's right. So that's the difference. The th the size of the batting, what we use as standard is one inch. Yes. Okay, but there is quarter inch. I think there's half. Yes, there's definitely half inch. It all this does is give you a nice softer feel and a bit of a crown to it. So if you were not to have the Daycron and you do not make your bands on your outdoor cushion smaller, then you will have a cover that looks like this. Exactly. Okay? Because if you make your bands the exact size, okay, and you put in your foam, you know, you're going to see this. But if you were to make them just a little bit tighter, we like to go in like an inch smaller, band size. I'm talking about your cushion cover. Right. And when okay. we say an inch small, it's the same thing as increasing your uh, foam an inch bigger than your bands. This is which way you start off first with the foam or the cushion cover, but we suggest starting off with the cushion cover. Back right. to you. Right. So <laughs> if you're making fresh new covers, then, you know, we would make them a smaller size than this. It's just, yes. I think it's just three, so we would do two inch and still do a, a one inch batting on both sides. And that, that's going to be pretty full looking. Okay. Yeah. Not foolish looking, but full. <laughs> okay. It's going to look good. It's going to look really good. So you can do that. Excellent. Okay, so I hope that it answers your question. I think so. You don't need batting. You don't need it if you don't want it on the outdoor cushions. But, but it, it does looks better. make it look a lot better. It makes it look like an indoor cushion. So imagine just having your nice indoor cushion outdoors, and that's what you have. And you don't really see that that often with uh, outdoor furniture nowadays. A lot of the time, it really does look like a really flat board. And the cushions are just so loose on those things. I don't know why they do that, but... I don't know. You know Go with one inch. I would go with one inch. Lowest you want to go is half inch. For the Daycron thickness. For the Daycron thickness, okay? Yeah. So, Debbie, thank you very much. And I think it's time to move on to us giving away the prize, okay? Exactly. We're really excited about this because we want to start doing this weekly mm -hmm. and giving away something with no strings attached. No strings attached at all. It's yours to keep. So, exactly. what we have is, let's first tell the contest. Yep. 
So what do you, what do you want to do first, the amount or the staples? Uh, we'll do we'll do the staples. Okay, sounds good. Right now we have a bag that we've been collecting over the years of staples, and it's quite heavy. Came off the floor of the shop here. Yep. And we know how much it weighs inside here, and we are going to recycle these, by the way. But we kept them out of the landfill. Um, I see how much it weighs, and how much do you think it weighs? Right. So go ahead and give your answers in the comment below. A, B, C, or D, and so cross the screen right now so you can see it. Multiple choice. Yeah. What the criteria is, you will have to subscribe and give a yes. like to this video. Share it with a friend if you want to. I mean, if you don't want them to win, you know, that's your <laughs> That's business. funny. Or maybe they don't even want it, and then the more people that are in there, like your friend, you know, whoever mm -hmm. it is, wins. Yeah. And they didn't want it, well, you can have it. Right. It'll make a difference. You can get a monopoly over the comment section. Right. But in any case, go ahead and do that. Put your answer A, B, or C, or D, don't want to forget D, mm -hmm. in there. And then we'll go ahead and pick at random which one of you are correct. We know which one are you correct, but out of the people who are, have the correct answer, we'll pick out. All right. How much do you think this bag of staples weighs? Exactly. Okay. And to give you an idea, this is a fresh new box, okay, unopened. Yeah. And including the weight of the box, I get it. This is 10,000 staples in here. The box is about a pound. It's, it's one pound. <laughs> what is? It's one pound, 11 ounces. Yeah. Okay, so that's one. That's 10,000 staples. How many pounds do you think this is? Okay, yeah. so this, again, it's one pound, 11 ounces for a fresh new box of 10,000 staples. Okay? So you'll have a choice, multiple choice. And what you're going to win is... Well, this is a good example right here. This is, again, for our client Potomac. Right. What you can win is $100 off your next foam order. Right. It's important because you're keeping it out of the landfill. There's no need to go buy a new one. 90% of the time, most of the time, is the fabric's fine. Yep. The furniture's fine. Yep. The cushions stink. <laughs> people are like, I don't like it anymore. It's uncomfortable. And they throw them in the trash. The perfect example that we can give for this is imagine getting a new car because your tires wear out. Could you imagine that? I've only done that twice. I'm uh, kidding. Well. So we just had an order of $137, and that was for two cushions. Right. Okay. So if you can imagine, you got one cushion absolutely free, and the other one for like, I don't know, 75% off. Right. So we don't even get it that cheap. No. Okay. So you're going to win $100 towards your foam purchase. And it may just be one cushion you need. Yeah. And don't forget, you got to put your answer in the comment section below. We'll go ahead and pick the winner and we'll notify you how we're going to contact you so you can get your coupon code for that. Right. We're going to post it on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, Facebook and YouTube, YouTube as a post. Right. So look for that next August 20 or October 22nd. Yeah. And we're going to try to do this once a week. So that's a week from today. Yeah. Okay. All right, so there we go. We hope you enter and we hope you win. Yes, definitely. Now we have one last question that we have to do. We don't want to forget about him. Let's see, it's um, Redes? Red, yeah, Red, um, Reddy's Reds? Something like that. I think it's Reddy Reds. Reddy Reds, which is pretty cool. Name. cool. Yeah. Great video. Thank you for sharing. Quick question, please. Is there a reason why you guys decided against the vacuum trick? during the insertion process uh he puts a timestamp timestamp thank you of a video uh is doing it manually. mainly manually like this better or it just a matter of preference thank you in advance okay that's a good question uh, we've good. had other people talk about that and i thought we would demonstrate that not today yeah well yeah we don't have any of the actual silk we don't keep that in stock and the reason why is it's never that hard to put the cushions in there. Now, if you want to do it, that's fine. It mm -hmm. takes about the same amount of time. You just get your vacuum, you cover it around and vacuum out the air, put it inside. The only thing I would say is you're still going to have to manipulate the insert when it's inside the cover to make sure it looks good. Mm -hmm. It's not just like you put it in there and poof, you know, it's perfect. You do have to still stick your hand up in there. The only benefit that comes from that is if you have a very small opening of the zipper. Yes. Okay. It is, a, it is a better benefit. You can vacuum it down and get it all through there and then let it poof out in the inside. What we're talking about that is sometimes this is the back of the cushion. Sometimes the opening for the zipper is only like this and doesn't come around the sides. If you have that, then I would suggest trying to find the silk. You can find it on Amazon mm -hmm. and vacuum it down because it's going to be a lot easier. You wrap it, make it tight seal, and then vacuum it. It sucks it down you shove it in there so to answer your question that's just really preference my father showed me that he gets by without it and yep. i don't think we've ever done it once no and yeah. it is a technique to it because i heard one person said they kept sucking up the film 
instead uh, of the actual cushion. So yeah. it's not like super easy, but it does make it easier mm -hmm. to put it in. It's a very thin film, but I think we'll do a video on that because we will. it's kind of interesting. It is. Okay, so just preference, but we appreciate it. Please enter if you'd like, and if not, you can give it to a friend, even if you win, if you don't want to have $100 off a cushion. So it's really going to be near free. Yeah, and this is going to be no strings attached, which is weekly. We're going to be giving away things like the private courses and the foam and other things as well. Mm -hmm. Now, what you need to do right now, if you haven't already commented, go ahead and comment with your answer and also comment with a question that you might have yes. regarding anything from cushions to reupholstering to window treatments, things like that. Repairs. Upholstery cleaning, anything like that. So purchasing furniture. That's yeah, a big one. We get a lot of those too. So we can answer your questions as well yeah. with that. Okay, or fabric durability. Because people don't understand the outdoor fabric versus indoor fabric. What's a good quality fabric? Yeah. How can you tell? You know, that, that, that uh, type of... We get that question a lot in our professional business. So. Yeah. So there you go. Go ahead and win. We look forward to seeing you, and we hope we uh, answered your questions. Kathy, Debbie, and uh, Ready Reds. Yep. I think it's Ready Reds. If Something not, like that. You mind if I call you Ready Reds? We like Ready Reds. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty cool. <laughs> All right, so we'll see you next time. Excellent. Thanks for watching.